Hello, family and friends. Hello, YouTube. Thank you for tuning in. My name's Matt, the creator of Clearlight Media. I hope you'll join me for adventure, inspiration, travel, helpful products and reviews, and the whatevers and whatnots, small and great, of daily life. Each video features original music. Please subscribe, share, like, and comment. In the first video, I gave you some background on myself and this channel. It mostly covered 2011 through April of 2020, with a few extra nuggets thrown in for context. In this episode, the story picks up in May 2020 as I ponder the options of the new world in which we find ourselves. I thought about moving overseas for many years, most of my adult life. Not traveling or vacationing, moving. Why? Because living in the U.S. has been at the brink of unbearable all my life. And now, with a game show host president, a frenzy of hypocrisy and stupidity, a fake opposition, and a world health crisis, life here has become actually unbearable. A month after returning from California, Again, I began intensely researching the idea of becoming an expat. Of course, I'd have to wait until some of the international travel restrictions lifted or loosened. Where to go? Is it possible at this time to directly move to another country, and is it advisable? What would it cost? And back to where would I go? I had always considered moving to a warmer climate. That was part of the calculation for moving to Oregon from Wisconsin. Oregon's Willamette Valley is quite pleasant weather-wise, sunny and warm much of the time with only a couple of months each year around the freezing point. Refreshing cloud bursts often, but rarely wash out rains. I was hesitant to move to the coast because of the myth that the weather was cold and rainy all the time. My experience bore out something much different. Not only did the sun shine most of the year on the coast, but the temperature almost never dipped below freezing. I saw it snow for about 10 minutes each year. In the summer, when the valley routinely has 90 to 100 degree days, the coast stays around 70. Perfect for some, perhaps, but a bit chilly for me, even with the abundant sunshine. Though I'm not crazy about temps over 100, 80 to 90 degree summer days feel right to me. As much as I love the Oregon coast, I was feeling robbed in the summertime. As picky as this may sound, I figured it appropriate to consider exactly what would make me comfortable. Health, happiness, and comfort were the main factors for me choosing a new place to be. What would contribute most greatly to my happiness and comfort? My top five were 1. Climate, natural beauty, and a clean environment. Two beautiful, friendly people with vibrant culture. Three, healthy, abundant, and affordable fresh food and local cuisines I enjoy. Four, a good healthcare system. And five, the ability to find work or work online. I like warm weather, mountains, fresh water and oceans, an environment free of nuclear and petrochemical pollutants, a place where the natives would welcome an American despite the American government's cruel actions in almost every part of the world, where I am attracted to the ideas and histories of the society, with women I feel most attracted to, a place where the food is delicious, plentiful and cheap, and not totally controlled by the petrochemical companies, a country that ranks fairly high on the Human Development Index, with good schools and hospitals and low rates of violent crime, where the cost of living is relatively low and the standard of living is relatively high. A place where a foreigner can be employed or work online from home legally. Online, I studied Google's map for locations and geographical characteristics, looked up the Human Development Index list, lists of most affordable countries to live in, articles on living as an expat, long-term living options and costs like visas and their requirements, housing, utilities, including high-speed internet access and reliable mobile service, climate maps and graphs, energy production and usage maps and lists, pollution maps, 
medical care maps and articles, lists of colleges and universities, political maps and considerations, business considerations, then more detailed research about specific towns, cities, or regions, usually beginning with Wikipedia. I tried to absorb as much hard factual information as possible first. Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Chile, Uruguay, Iceland, Portugal, the Philippines, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, and India. These 11 countries came to the top of my list because they satisfied enough of my rough criteria to warrant more scrutiny. Though it has many of the best qualities, Iceland was eliminated from the list first because of its climate. India was next because it seemed too large, overwhelming, and populated, and because of its spats with its nuclear neighbor. Though in hindsight, I see India has excellent immigration policy for long-term expats. I eliminated Costa Rica because of its popularity among Americans. I'm not trying to move abroad to live in an expat community. I want to live in a different culture with the local people. The Philippines had to be removed from the list because of their insane dictator and killer cops. Next were the Central and South American countries because I have a great desire to live in a Buddhist society. Portugal dropped off the list for this reason and the fact that it was the most expensive country to live in that was still on the list. So I'm left with Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand. Southeast Asia seems most hospitable to me at this time for many reasons. All these countries have tropical climates, amazing beaches and coastlines, lots of fresh water, and beautifully varied topography. They have loving and welcoming Buddhist societies full of ancient treasures and are striving for better standards of living through higher education and technology. They are all affordable to live in and seem well suited for a digital nomad with decent technology infrastructure, schools, and hospitals. Delicious fresh food is the norm and seems impossibly cheap. Now I need to delve more deeply into research on these Southeast Asian countries. Thank you for watching and please stay tuned to Clear Light Media. Please subscribe, share, like, and comment.